He'll have a public hearing after we do the deposition. This is the way credible investigations are conducted. And Hunter, Hunter Biden is not above the law. Just because he's gotten away with uh, criminal activity by the DOJ, the FBI, the IRS, the National Archives, doesn't mean he's going to be treated that way by the House Oversight Committee. So now the battle lines are drawn, and Hunter Biden says he's willing to testify before that committee but only if it's public and only before cameras. Uh, the panel's chairman saying that ain't going to happen. George Washington University law professor Jonathan Turley has written the first of many pieces about this, and it's fresh today. Sir, good morning to you. Uh, thank you for your time. When I read it, thank Abby you. Lowell, the attorney for Hunter Biden, said, uh, in part, unlike members of the Trump family, Hunter's a private person who's never worked in any family business nor ever served in the White House or in any public office. To that, you would say what regarding a private citizen in a matter like this? <laughs> Well, I, I think I'd state the obvious, that a congressional subpoena is not like an invitation to a debutante ball. You don't get to just debate when you'll be going to show up and how. Uh, you have to show up. And the uh, Justice Department, or Merrick Garland, has been very aggressive in pursuing Trump associates for contempt. Uh, so the expectation is that they would have to be consistent uh, if Hunter Biden does not show up. So this is not a mutual conversation. This That's the point of a subpoena. You're past that point. Uh, this is saying, show up on this day, and you will be asked questions, and you will be expected to answer. Okay. So let's, let's go ahead and play this out. Can this interview, can this hearing, or whatever you want to call it, can it be avoided uh, by Hunter Biden, yes or no? No. I mean, mm -hmm. if he if he refuses to appear, he will be committing contempt of Congress. And there's sometimes room at the elbows for uh, timing and, and conditions, but there's not much. Uh, when you push something like this to the subpoena stage, uh, those options are rather narrow. And he has spent years in denial and delay. Uh, he's now going to be expected to answer questions. Now, he may, you know, cite his past drug use or the passage of time. But there's a real risk here for Hunter Biden. That delay has allowed the House to assemble a, just an enormous amount of evidence. He's not going to be asked these sweeping questions from an enabling media. He's going to be asked very specific questions about messages that he sent, including one threatening that his father mm -hmm. would bring down the wrath of his office on a Chinese businessman if they didn't send the Bidens money. Yeah. So uh, James Biden, his uncle, has agreed. So that will happen behind closed doors. Am I right about that? Yes, and that's okay. common. You know, the Democrats, like Re Representative Raskin, who are objecting, this is how they conducted the investigations, because you go behind closed doors because you have more leeway. There's lots of things that may be private. There's lots of things that may have to be redacted. And so it's often the case that this starts behind closed doors, and then you have a public hearing. Okay, so then, uh, you mentioned the evidence here. I was looking at this WhatsApp message. It says, I'm sitting here waiting for the call with my father. That was a request for money into his account. Uh, and you referred to it. So, so Hunter Biden says, I was an addict. I was in thinking with a clear head. My, my dad wasn't even with me when I sent that message. And furthermore, I don't recall. And he can say that repeatedly. And I, I, what can Comer's committee yeah, I, get yeah. out of him based on this evidence that you just suggested is so strong? Well, the fact is that this road becomes increasingly perilous once you walk down it, that Hunter Biden could invoke the Fifth Amendment, become the first child to ever do so in front of Congress of a, a sitting president. Uh, but the assumption is he won't. And he may be citing the, his addiction, which has been used by the media in the past to excuse all this. The problem is that he wasn't, he wasn't some junkie in Times Square snatching a purse. He was at the center of a multi-million dollar global system of influence peddling, according to, in the view of many of us. Uh, that involved dozens of shell companies and accounts moving millions of dollars to Biden family members. Uh, he's going to explain how he was this black out junkie, but could still be at the center of that type of system. Okay, and on that point, what, what do you, I, I read through your piece this morning, you mentioned a lot of things here, and, and maybe he was at the center of this all-encompassing operation that helped feed a lot of money to a lot of members of his family, including his father. 
What do you believe is the single best piece of evidence to prove that, if they can? Well, first of all, that what, what's a uh, 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 message is quite telling uh, because it is a direct reference to his father, and that has come up in a lot of emails where he constantly refers to his dad. His dad called in on meetings with investors, was put on speakerphone, and even Democrats now admit that they were selling influence. They just insist it's an illusion. Well, money did go into accounts of Biden family members, and he refers to paying bills of his father from some of those accounts. It's very clear that President Biden benefited from this because it benefited his family. And in bribery cases in federal court, that's enough as a benefit. But there's also references of direct payments out of some of these accounts and shared credit cards. He's going to have to answer those questions. You write, the threat of prosecution is real. And I would just underline that because you're coming into an election year. And his dad's going to be on the ballot. Jonathan Turley, thank you for your time today. We'll speak again very soon. Thank you, Professor. Thank you, Bill. All right. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilmeade. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.